Oh gosh, good fish there. There he is. Got him. Oh yeah. Woo! Oh, there's another one. My gosh. Oh man, that was a little bit bigger one too. Oh, there's a pompano right there. There he is. It's not a pompano, but it is a tasty look down fish. Inside down first. Oh my gosh, there he is. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh. There he is. Mm, got one on the shrimp, finally. Oh, there we go. Fishaholics, welcome back to another episode. We're uh, out here on the river to start off the day, and we're actually gonna be on the river all day long, and we're starting way up to like where it's basically almost like fresh water or brackish, and we'll probably end up going down river like at least like five, 10 miles in uh, pursuit of hopefully some tarpon, Jack Creval, snook, black drum, redfish, croaker, pompano, snapper, grunt, you know, maybe even some grouper as well. The list can go on and on. And also a huge thanks to uh, Tide Chasers for sponsoring today's video and more on them in a little bit or once at least we get some fish on the board for the day. So we're gonna pull up to our first spot in a minute and we're gonna take a few casts first with some artificials, but I also have the cast net and I might try to uh, get some bait way up river here. And I'm curious to see if uh, some of the tarpon up here will eat some of the bait that I catch up here. And there, there's a lot of bait further down river right now, like small mullet, mahara, you know, all that good stuff. But I can't really catch it down there where it's extremely salty and bring it way up river where it's, like I said, basically fresh brackish water because the bait will pretty much die. So uh, typically it seems like the best presentation of way up river here is either a small swim bait or like a small um, voodoo shrimp, kind of like this here. But I, I'm really intrigued to see if maybe there's like mud minnows way up uh, river here or maybe there's some maharas living up here in the in the freshy water and um, there's definitely mullet way up in here but i feel like for the bait to work we have to catch it up here in the environment where we're going to try and target uh, our fish so uh, stay tuned let's grab our first stick and uh, start uh, casting away All right, we're gonna start out with the voodoo shrimp in this first spot. And the goal is to try and be as stealthy as possible. And I'm gonna work this mangrove shoreline here. Before we take our first cast, I'm just gonna bust open this new bottle of Dr. Juice. Let's give this voodoo shrimp a nice coating so it has a lot of flavor. 
Right now we've got the end of the out going tide, which should be good for this little spot because the current's sweeping from left to right and we're on a, a turn way up in the river here and all this current pushes into this shoreline here so a lot of fish just sit here and wait for any kind of food to sweep by with the current and they gobble it up oh got something small here <laughs> look at that a little mangrove snapper this little guy hit it like three four times Pretty cool. Nothing big, but it's uh, going to start off the day for us. So we're out of the skunk zone. Oh gosh, good fish there. Good fish right there. I think we found a spunky Jack Kerval. I believe, or it could be a fat snook, like a nice size one. <clears throat> Feels good though. A much better, better fight so far than that little snapper. done yet Oh my god, this, this fish is not giving up. She's relentless. Come on, come on, come on. I just want to see it. Oh yeah, it's a decent jack curveball. There we go. Not bad. He crushed that little voodoo shrimp. See you later. Yeah, it was probably like a solid 10 pounder. Not bad at all. All right, let's take two or three more casts along this bank here. And then I think I'm gonna pick up the cast net and try and catch some bait in this area because I have been marking quite a bit. And it's basically like slack low right now. We have like no current. So I'm actually kind of surprised that I was able to nail that jack with such little current, but it m might've just been luck. You know, he swam by right at the perfect moment when I put the shrimp in front of his face and he just munched it. And uh, the goal is after we get bait to go a little bit further up river. And uh, there's a, like a basin area spot that a few weeks ago uh, I was up, I was up in fishing and it was stacked with tarpon. And it was actually during one of my live streams and sadly I could not get a single tarpon to eat. So that's why I'm thinking maybe live bait will be key for those tarpon. And this spot usually has a couple tarpon lurking around but obviously not today but we'll probably try it again uh, on our way back down river after we go to the next spot oh that log got me i thought it was a fish for a sec after i get this out let's just start throwing the cast net so what's key if you ever get stuck on some underwater logs is you reel up to the the lure if, if it's just one single hook and you try and just push it out which normally works, but right now, not so much. Come on. 
<sighs> got it. All right, got the net ready. And uh, before I forget, again, huge shout out to Tide Chasers for sponsoring today's video. And as you can see here, I'm rocking the Tide Chasers rain jacket, which is extremely comfortable. It keeps me nice and cool down here in the warmer climate. And it'll be great for uh, you northerners uh, in the summertime because of its lighter color. And it obviously shows a little bit of the dirt, but hey, sometimes uh, that's like a badge of honor to show that you fish hard. <laughs> but I love that it has the camo down the sleeves, the reflective tape down the back so you can be seen a little easier at night. And it has four waterproof pockets here. So as I'm throwing the cast net around, it'll keep my top my like, top shirt uh, dry and it'll also keep the stuff in my pockets dry, which is nice. And speaking of waterproof, this is their breathable yet waterproof and actually floatable UV50 hat, which I love and is extremely comfortable. And I also love their uh, long sleeve uh, bamboo, bamboo tee hoodies. So if you wanna check out any of their great on the water products, I'll put a link down in the description and you can use code Fishaholic to save 15% on your entire order. And uh, by supporting Tide Chasers, you also in turn kind of help support this channel as well. So check them out. And uh, now let's uh, keep on grinding and hopefully we'll get some more fish on the board. Didn't really see any bait there, but I just figured I would take a toss. <laughs> I caught a lot of mud, <laughs> a lot of mud. Well, got a stick. <laughs> we got some bait on that toss. Look how small it is though. And the sad thing is like tarpon and snook probably devour these little baits, but I can't put that on a hook. <laughs> uh, we might not be able to get like two, three inch baits like what I want. Oh, I got some bait. Got some Maharas. Oh my God, check this out guys. I also caught the smallest little snook ever. Look at that little guy. Oh my gosh. Oh no, no. Let's get him back. And I also got some primo baits. Look at the size of that little guy. And then I got a couple that are a little smaller and then one slightly bigger one. Let's try and fish with these guys. Oh, look at that. A tarpon just rolled right in front of me. I'm gonna hook them just like that. Another tarpon just rolled right over there. There's another one. While I wait for a bite, I'm gonna pick up the voodoo shrimp now. Gosh, there's so many tarpon rolling around, but no matter what I do, I can't get them to bite. They are super smart here. Oh, there, there was one. I got a bite. No freaking way. I got a bite on the voodoo. Oh yeah, Woo! that was an epic jump. That's what I'm talking about. Finally. Another one just rolled right there. 
Oh! Whew. That's a nice tarpon right there. Oh my gosh. He almost jumped into the boat. Nice fish right there. I thought they would be a little more lethargic with the uh, cooler water, but this one is pretty feisty. Oh God. No, 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 no. Just as I went to grab the net, because I thought this fish was done, and then he got a second wind, and he's still pulling pretty good. Well, I only got 30 pound floral leaders, so I'm playing them really light. Oh, come on, baby, come on, come on. I would love to get my hands on this one. Oh man, how, how is this fish not done? Like how, what? This fish is fighting harder for the second half of the fight than like the first like minute. I swear I thought this fish was done. And that's why I went to run and grab the net and it's like that this fish knew what was happening. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Whew! Got her. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Tarpon on the board for the day. Oh god. Oh my gosh, this fish swam through the hole in the net. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. What? <clears throat> Got her. There we go. Hook is out. That is a beautiful fish right there. All right, just a closer look for you guys. This fish is most likely in uh, the upper 30 inch, sub 40 inch range so we could take her out of the water. And man, what an epic catch right there. It's crazy that she went through the net, so I, I kinda had to catch her twice. <laughs> Whew, let's get her back. Kind of tired so i'm gonna pull her ahead a little bit oh, oh he's biting my thumb right oh there he goes all right pretty cool i got one and i am super happy with that Let's see what time it is. 12.38 right now. So I'm gonna fish my way out of here. So like I'm only gonna probably spend like 10 more minutes in here. And then we're gonna start fishing our way back down river. Because I wanna fish some other spots where we could potentially catch uh, something other than tarpon and also possibly something that we could eat. Also the snook season just opened. So if we get a like 28, 29 inch snook, I might throw them in the box. But there's also been quite a bit of pompano, uh, quite a few pompano around, so we could try and catch some of them. And I also have my uh, portable 
a, a skillet with me so we could cook them up and make ourselves a little pompano lunch. Yesterday I actually caught a grunt and I was trying to catch a pompano, didn't catch a pompano, but the grunt sufficed and I cut them up out here and made a delicious uh, blackened grunt sandwich with uh, red onion and pineapple on toasted bread. Oh, there's another one. My gosh. Oh man, that was a little bit bigger one too. I literally vertical jigged that one right under the, the boat. <laughs> that was cool. Oh, there's another one right under me. There's another one. Oh my gosh. Smart fish. He jumped right at me and threw it. All right, well, it's been about 10 minutes now since that last bite, and I am super stoked with how well we did up in this area because, uh, like I may have mentioned, that was the first tarpon that I've actually caught in this basin area spot, and uh, I know that they are here, and I, I've, I found these fish that they like to be up here like probably like five years ago, but just failed to ever get a bite. So I am on cloud nine now that we were able to get like three, four bites and land one. I land him twice actually because he was in the net and then he swam through the hole. <laughs> Man, I got to get that fixed. But it's uh, starting to get real hot up river here now and I kind of want to switch it up. So we're going to beeline it down river a few miles and I think stop off and hit a pompano spot to see if we can get one for lunch and also maybe to take home. And then we'll probably hit a bridge or two and maybe some docks and some seawalls uh, further down river. So let's get it. This bridge up ahead I'm gonna take a couple casts on just to see if there's a couple snook I'm gonna try this little three inch swim bait now all right I'm gonna get this little swim bait down to the bottom and then I'm gonna I'm just gonna drag it along this bulkhead maybe we'll get a snook to bite tides coming in right now and it looks good there should be at least a small snook here. Huh, no bites. So I'm only using 30 pound fluoro. So I'm sure some of you noticed how I backed off on the drag. Oh, 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 as soon as I got him out away from the structure, because they, he could still foray right through this leader with his abrasive mouth. And he is hooked kind of deep. It's, it's not on the edge of his lips. Oh, I missed him. There we go. Got him. Not bad. That's a chunky sub slot snook. Whew. This guy was hooked good. Sweet. That's probably like 25, 26 inches. goes all right nothing else let's roll and I think the next spot I'm gonna try and get some pompano all right made it to a pompano spot that potentially could be good let's see what I can get to eat this smaller little voodoo shrimp And by the way, I don't work with uh, egret baits that make these little voodoo shrimps, but they just work so well. That's why I fish with them. 
I also do have some new Pompano jigs that I kind of want to try out if uh, this doesn't work. I'll give this like 15, 20 minutes. And even if we get one, we're gonna move on. There he is, fish on. Oh, it's not a pompano, but it is a tasty look down fish. So you know what? I think this guy is gonna be lunch. Oh, there's a pompano right there. They are here. I kept that look down alive. Just in case we do get a pompano in a minute, then I might throw them back and eat the pompano. All right, no other bites on this little voodoo. But you know what? I brought my fly box here and I have a small fly in here that I'm thinking could work well for the pompano. Like this little guy here. It's, uh, it's supposed to imitate a little shrimp. So I'm gonna fish this fly the same way I'm fishing the voodoo with just a split shot a couple feet ahead of it. And we'll see if it works. There he is, fish on. On the fly, what is it? Oh, another look down fish. This look down crushed it. Look at that, he almost swallowed the fly. I gotta get the pliers. All right, sadly no pompano, but we gave it like only 30 minutes. So I'm sure if we stuck with it, we could probably get a couple, but I'm content with that look down that we got in the box. So uh, I'm gonna head down river to another spot where uh, there's like a dock on the edge of a flat. And on that flat, there's been quite a bit of uh, mullet hanging out there. And on the dock, there's been quite a few uh, jacks there. So I'm thinking that would be a good place just to post up, fillet up the look down, uh, cook up our lunch, and if we can get a mullet or two, then we could also have a bait out the back uh, and you know, maybe we could catch a, a fish while we're uh, cooking and eating lunch. So let's uh, go do it. All right, let's see if there's some bait here. Not one single bait here but the water's like chocolate milk, so it's kind of hard to see. But I do have one Mahara left, I, I think, in the live well. So I'm gonna throw that out, and then I'm gonna start filleting up our look down fish. There you have it, two nice, beautiful fillets. We're gonna leave the skin on and season them up and throw them in the frying pan. Check it out guys, the new Fishaholic uh, cast iron frying pan that my sister Erica got me as a, a gift recently. And a huge shout out to you Erica. And this is gonna be the first catch and cook on the new pan, so I'm super stoked about that. All right, let's start off by throwing some butter in the pan. Oh. 
Oh, that looks good. Now let's season up our fillets with some of this Dano's seasoning. Let's put a little coating of lemon juice on there. And then we'll be generous with this seasoning. Inside down first. All right, that should be about done. Put it back on the skillet just to heat up the tortilla a little bit. Cheers. Lunch is served. Oh yeah. I am starving. That looks good, right? <laughs> more lemon on there I love making wraps good stuff if you guys want to check out this Dano seasoning for some of your fish that you're catching at home I'll put a link down in the description and I just started using that literally yesterday because I did a catch and cook out here as well and I'm in love with it <laughs> It's an awesome like blackened type uh, fish seasoning, but it's not too hot. It's got a little kick to it, but nothing crazy. All right, let's see what time it is. It is 3.56 right now. So once we're done with this, we got two hours to hit our final spot and hopefully get on a good bite. That was perfect. Let's clean up and get back to the fishing. All right, we're at our final spot. Let's catch them. To start, let's tie on this four inch swim bait it looks like the tide just started to move here and it's going out now so we we were out here first at the very end of the outgoing tide in the morning and then basically the, the entire the whole tide the tide came in all the way and now it's just starting to go out all right let's see if there's any hungry fish All right, nothing over there. So we move to the other side. Let's try right in there. Fish on. Is that a little red fish? Nope. A decent size croaker or no I don't know this might be a kingfish look at that it's not a croaker I believe that's an Atlantic kingfish let's throw them in the live well real quick to find out All right, let's see if we can find that fish on the fish rules app here. And I, like I said, I believe it's a northern kingfish or, oh, there, oh, there it is. 
southern kingfish, not a northern kingfish. And let's see, additional information. Edibility, very good. And there's no established size limit or bag limit in state waters. So I'm going to keep them. Why not? We'll try them. That could be tasty. All right, I'm going to try making a switch from this swim bait to... this shrimp that I have rigged here on this jig head. I think that'll get munched by a big fish. Come on, come on, come on. Big fish, big fish, big fish. It'd be really nice just to end the day with like at least a slot size snook a redfish, black drum, like 28, 30 inches. And I believe that they're here. I just gotta get lucky and find a dumb one that'll eat this. <laughs> oh, I got something here. Something I snagged. No freaking way. A puffer fish tried to eat this monster shrimp lure. That's crazy. All right, I've been casting all around this main channel. I basically went in a full circle now. And I thought the shrimp was going to get it done, but uh, so far, no, nothing significant. I can't believe I got that freaking puffer fish. <laughs> uh, hmm. Let's try a smaller swim bait here with uh, also lighter leader. Right now, I'm actually kind of fishing much slower than if I was like specifically targeting snook. I'm trying to see if there's like a black drum on the bottom that'll hit this. Oh, there was a bite. Maybe the three inch swim bait is gonna do it for us. Come on, one more fish, one more decent fish. There he is. Oh gosh. Nope, get out of there. Get out of there. Oh. Something decent here. Oh no. He's got me in the bottom. I bet you it's a grouper. Let's try lightening up. And maybe he'll swim out. Oh, oh, I got him. I got him out. Oh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Please stay hooked. And I hope the line doesn't break. Nice. A little juvie Goliath. Got him. Woohoo. Sweet. There he is. Right on the nose. The hook is fine and somehow I don't have like a single nick on my leader. I got lucky. That's a chubby juvie Goliath. All right, let's get this little baby back. All right, let's get back down there. I'm gonna try the shrimp again, but if this doesn't work, I might have to go back to that little three inch swim bait. With this setup, at least like that little grouper, I would have been able to yank up in a second. You know, this is the uh, Dark Matter Fishaholic seven foot heavy action stick. 
and I've got 20 pound uh, braid on here, 60 pound fluorocarbon leader, and uh, I'm using the BGMQ6000D. And that last, that other setup is the medium fast action uh, Dark Matter Fishaholic uh, series spinning rod. And that was the setup that we were using to catch tarpon earlier. And I think it only has like 10 or 15 pound braid and just the 30 pound fluoro leader. So not really the, the best setup for fishing heavy structure. We got real lucky. <laughs> not even a touch on the shrimp. <clears throat> Let's try this little swim bait again. It'd be crazy if we get nailed again by another grouper. Oh my gosh, there he is. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh. Where is this fish going? Oh God, this is a big fish. Big, big, big fish. No, 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 no. Get out of there. Get out of there. Insane. Oh, lost them right there. Oh, that's crazy. All right, let's put down the light stick. <clears throat> that was probably a snook just based on how it ripped down current. You know, it didn't stay like deep and close to the bottom like a grouper does. It came up and went down and then he went right back into the piling and, and there wasn't much I could really do there. I was crossing my fingers that the uh, leader was, was strong enough, but it wasn't. It, it could have even just broken off from the, the snook's uh, mouth, just fraying right through it. It's like the magic hour right now. The sun is setting, and we're slowly starting to lose the light, and these fish are chewing. There he is. Mm, got one on the shrimp, finally. Oh, there we go. Oh, 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 oh man, this is a big fish here. Oh, now I've got proper tackle to keep this fish out from the structure. Or not. Nope. Oh gosh. That was close. Come on, come on up. Is it a redfish? I kid you not, it might be a redfish. Oh man. Oh yeah, it's a bull red, baby. Oh, I got him. Yeah. Woo. What a freaking day, man. All right, I bet you that last fish that I lost was probably another redfish. Look at that. This is definitely a PB redfish for me, for this area. Let's get a quick measure. This fish is just about 37 inches. All right, guys, there you have it. Look at that beautiful redfish. That fight was so epic, and what a way to end the day. Although I'm probably gonna take a few more casts. Let's get her back.
is going to be a wrap for this video and i had a blast filming this one for you guys so if you enjoyed please smash that like button hit that subscribe button down below and the little bell notification to uh, stay tuned for future videos and uh, i can't be any happier right now uh, you know getting a nice tarpon and a decent jack to start off the day and then uh, we got a decent snook and then we uh, worked our way further down river got that look down and made a phenomenal lunch that was so delicious and i'll be honest i was getting a little worried towards the end of the day here uh, when i was doing circles around this channel and fishing all the structure and all i could get was that kingfish and luckily uh, my persistence paid off and we got that cool juvie grouper lost the second nice fish right in that same spot and then we nailed that redfish and uh, yeah I'm, I'm on cloud nine right now so anyway thank you all so much for watching and i hope to see you all in the next episode and like always live to fish fish to live